defense played really well in the second half or appeared to. What, what maybe was the adjustments you guys made late second quarter versus the <laughs> second half? Yeah, there wasn't a lot of adjustments at halftime. It was really uh, my vantage point from the box. Just like I told the guys, was uh, guys were pressing to make plays. And when that happens, guys don't do their job. They try to do somebody else's job. A guy pops a gap to try to make a play, folds in when he shouldn't, uh, jumps her out, those types of things. And what I was watching from the box was uh, nobody was not giving effort. Nobody wasn't playing football it was like one guy per play one guy tried to make a play instead of letting the plays come to them in the second half everybody did their job and, and things went, went, went much better for us I said yesterday that I mean moving the box for I think it was a like one sack and a couple tackles for loss but I said he thought that maybe the performance up front was better than what the numbers showed did you like the way your, your front line group played as, as the game went along yeah I, I, that first group especially um, you know Fordham did a good job of getting the ball out of that uh, young guy's hands quickly. Uh, and he did a nice job of getting the ball out quickly as well. Uh, you know, so there wasn't a, a ton of room for sacks. I'd like to get to the quarterback a little more. Um, obviously, more TFLs are, are better. But I thought the first group, uh, you know, with the rotators played played pretty well. You know, as you get down to the threes and, and the fours, you know, a couple of runs popped out of there that shouldn't have. Um, you know, and if, if you want to look at back scores and don't watch the game, then you just see that, but um, I thought the front line played pretty well. Um, you know, as that at first and second group, those rotators went through there. Is there anything you take from seeing the performance by the Green Hagen kid that you guys that you guys show in film for having a nose for the ball? Yeah, I, I don't know if I have a lot of time to uh, show film of other people because uh, we got work to do. But I, I thought that kid played an unbelievable football game. A really good football player. I think they knew that coming in that he was a good football player, and I, I, I admire the way he plays football. And I think he's, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the in the Power Five and in, in the Big Ten, anytime you got a new guy, they're going to test him, and he's got to show that he can hold up and, and make the plays in the run game. And then, you know, they try to go after somebody else. That's kind of the way the football works. So, you know, I think he's improving every week in that aspect. Uh, and, you know, in practice, it's, it's one thing when, you know, it's kind of thud and all those types of things. And then you get live bolts flying at you, and it's a different deal. Uh, you know, he got his first taste of, of, of real true starter action against a Big Ten football team. Uh, so I think he's going to continue to get better and better in the run game. Um, but that's an area that he has to work on because we all know in this league they're going to find a formation, they're going to find a way to make um, you know, a secondary player make a tackle. I remember coming home from class. Uh, afternoon practice back then just about everyone did and I remember turning the TV on and seeing well we didn't know what was happening yet but we saw a major catastrophe we saw obviously fire and we saw reports coming out and then as things began to become more clear um, you know it was a obviously a dark day for our country and um, great respect for the the people in the, the police department the fire department the first responders people in the military, the guys that went in and, and had to clean up the, the disaster that went on and, and saved a lot of lives and lost some on their own. Um, so that, that always will be burned into my brain. Um, another thing, you know, I remember we went to the, the, the football complex and, you know, we didn't know what was going to go on. And then you have to keep practicing. And then as it became more clear, that game got canceled, postponed. I can't remember exactly, but we did not play that week. I think there was only a handful of games that got played that week um, in wake of 9-11. Of but, uh, you know, I think that's something that's always going to be burned in my memory. Uh, anytime you go through, a, you know, a, an act of terrorism or a natural disaster in your own country, um, some of those things I learned about in history, but I wasn't there, so I just know about them. That one you experience firsthand through television. Obviously, I wasn't there, but um, you experience it firsthand, and you'll, you'll never forget. You'll never forget that day. You'll never forget what happened. And you, like I said, you'll never forget the people that had to go into that disaster and risk their own lives. Some of them lost theirs to help help the country regain, you know, what freedom we have. What worried you about the 
worries you about Buffalo? What concerns you about their offense? Uh, I think Buffalo is a fantastic football team. Um, obviously, they scored 69 points last week. They have a really good quarterback. He makes really good decisions. Um, they got some dangerous receivers. They've got a transfer um, that's, in my opinion, he's a really good player. He's explosive when he gets the football. They've got a running back that was a backup to the young guy that's at the uh, Washington Redskins right now. And, you know, he ended up being the MVP of the bowl game last year. So dangerous skill players, uh, an experienced offensive line, and a really good decision maker at quarterback. And I think that we're going to have to play lights out on, on Saturday uh, because this is a really good football team coming in here. Yeah, so he, uh, like you said, he missed he missed time with an injury. Uh, he came back and he didn't dip his toe in the water. He dived right in. He made mistakes. He corrected mistakes. He played fast. He knows what he's doing. He's prepared. Um, and then, kind of the uh, the separating factor was he earned the right to be on the core four special teams. So anytime a guy does that, we have to get him ready to play in the football game because he's on the bus. And then once he started getting reps with the twos and the ones, he showed that he probably belongs. Um, is he a starter yet? No, he's not. He's not ahead of some of those guys, but he's a really, really good player. That's going to be. Uh, I think he's going to see a lot of time uh, as a Husker in the future. Of those younger players, who were a bunch of them. Did anybody jump out? They're just like, yeah, they played pretty well in their, their short stint on the field. You know, I thought most of those guys that came in. <laughs> especially with that second wave kind of at the end of the third quarter. I thought that group did a really good job. And that's more of an experienced group. You know, your safeties, you got you had Miles and Noah in there, and you had some, some backers that probably just need a few more reps and some D-line. And then, you know, some really young guys. Jamari Butler came in and did a really nice job. Um, so I was happy with what some of those young guys did and then not so happy that, you know, we gave up some plays with that younger group. I mean, I think that's going to happen when you put younger guys in. But the emphasis to those guys – since we started the season is everybody has to prepare like they're the starter. It's easy for Deontay and Nick Henrich and those guys to get prepared because they know they're going to play football. The challenge is those guys that are a three, can you get ready just like the starter? You know, the backups, they know they're one play away, but that three, they're two plays away. So can they get ready like they're the starter? And I think that after reviewing the film with those guys, that sunk in a little bit that I need to be ready. Did Deontay Williams, is he taking his game to another level? Yeah, I think I think all those um, you know those guys with experience have taken their game to a new level. Um, Deontay's playing uh, really well in coverage right now. He's playing really well in the run game. Obviously, you know he got a couple picks, uh, and those plays came to him, and he did his job uh, on those plays. He did his job throughout the game, and those plays came to him. And and you know part of that is also when you're talking about one sack, uh, there was a lot of pressure on that quarterback, and sometimes. When you get pressure and that kid don't want to take a sack, errant throws come, maybe a bad decision here and there, and that allows some picks in the back end. So it all kind of works together. If we're getting interceptions, we're happy. If we're getting sacks, we're happy. If we're getting both, we're really happy. With Cam, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about about mistakes in the front turn game. What does it take for that to not be over to your responsibilities on defense? And how do you think he's handled that? Because Scott said yesterday he thought he has two bad plays and he's played really well. Yeah, he's, he's played well on defense. I mean, there's there hasn't been bust. There hasn't been uh, – I don't shoot, I don't know how many balls he's thrown at him, you know, after the the pick that got wiped off the board. Uh, but he's he's done a good job on defense so far. Obviously, he's got to clean some things up in the special teams game. But Cam's always been a guy that uh, when a mistake happens or if somebody catches a ball on him, he doesn't have that, you know, that deal where it's going to burn in him for the rest of the game. He's going to flush it. He's going to move on. Uh, next play. So he's done a pretty good job with that. Um, and part of that, you know, to, in my opinion, and I don't coach special teams and those types of things, and I don't see it, you know, the film, I don't study that film as much as those guys do, but part of that's pressing to make a play again. You know, it's my turn. I'm going to get the punt. I'm going to go make something happen. Um, like we said, just you got to make the plays that come to you. You got to do it when it's, your, when it's your time. When it's your job to not make that play, don't make the play. Yeah, it was awesome to be, uh, you know, it's been awesome to play with fans. Um, you know, we had a lot of fans at Illinois, which was really cool. And then coming home for the first time, it, you know, it's, like we said before many times, there's no place better in the country to play than in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I think, 
some of these guys that are redshirt freshmen or COVID year freshmen, whatever they are now, they didn't get to see that last year. And that was awesome for them to get to see it. Awesome for the new guys. And then awesome for the old guys too, to, you know, when they make a play, awesome to hear the, 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 the crowd respond um, as opposed to last year, they made some plays and it's just nothing, you know? So it's awesome for those guys. I know Jojo said it was a really special moment when he got that interception and he heard the crowd, um, you know, kind of go crazy after, after making that play. And I think those are moments that, these guys need to savor moments they're they're going to remember for the rest of their life and if you let it pass by if you don't enjoy it for just a couple seconds then then you're missing out all right